The Jinhao X159 is a large cigar-shaped fountain pen, fairly reminiscent of the 1000 US dollar Mont Blanc 149. However, this pen won't cost you anywhere near that amount. They usually go for around 10 US dollars. It's offered in a wide variety of colors. The one that I have here is deep red with gold accents. The finials are both conical in shape with rounded edges, and the top finial is separated from the cap by a single gold band. There is a bent metal clip that's springy and functional. The cap then has a gradual taper down to a thin gold band, which reads Jin Hao X159. There's then a little bit of exposed plastic and a step down to the barrel. The cap comes off in one, two, and about a quarter turn to reveal a very large number eight stainless steel nib. This one is two-tone in color. It has the Jin Hao Chariot logo. Then it says Jin Hao and an F for fine. The section starts with a flare-up and then a portion that's pretty consistent in diameter, followed by threads that are smooth to the touch, and then a little step up to the barrel. The barrel then tapers gradually down to another gold band, followed by the end finial. In the hand, the pen does have some heft, but overall it's very thick, especially that section. This pen would be great for anyone with large hands. And if your hands are too large, even for when the pen is unposted, the cap does post deeply and securely. It back weights the pen just a little bit, but again, if you have large hands, that might be a good thing. In terms of size comparisons, here's the Jinhao X159, a typical Pilot G2 rollerball pen and your standard Sharpie. Okay, disassembling the Jinhao X159. Cap unscrews. And unfortunately, it's not easy to disassemble this cap further, but if we pull in some LED lighting, we can see that there isn't a cap liner, which means in order to clean this cap, you just need to put it under running water. Next, we'll unscrew the barrel from the section and then we can see the included converter, which pulls right out. And lastly, we have our section with our nib and feed. The nib and feed can be pulled right out. At this point, you have the pen fully disassembled. To reassemble, let's start with the nib and feed. If you look closely, the feed does have a ridge at the back to hold the nib in place. We'll then put that into our section and attach our converter to that section, followed by the barrel, and then lastly, our cap. And we're ready to ink up. Inking up the Jinhao X159, today I selected Diamine Writer's Blood. It's a nice deep red with a little bit of purple in it. Cap unscrews. And barrel unscrews from the section. We'll then submerge the nib into the ink. And something to be cognizant of, the section is so thick that the um, nib does not fit into this ink bottle. Let's see if we can get it to draw up any ink. We cannot. So here we have two options. We can syringe fill this converter or do something maybe a little bit more dangerous. And that is directly fill up the converter itself. Let's try that. I'm going to take the section off. Leave it there for now. Submerge the converter and give it a turn to draw up ink. Okay. I'm next going to go ahead and insert the converter back into the section. Screw on the barrel, followed by the cap. 
cap up our ink. And we're ready to write. Okay, writing with the Jinhao X159. Cap unscrews. And our nib is a stainless steel fine. It's a well-tuned nib. It is perhaps a little bit drier than I would prefer. Um, and it does have a decent amount of feedback, but for this price range, it's perfectly appropriate. Um, I would consider tuning this nib and let me know in the comments if that's something you guys would like to see. Our ink is Diamine Writer's Blood. Oops. For flex, I'll turn the page so we can get a little bit closer. You don't really get flex when you put pressure down on the nib, you end up um, basically pushing out more ink, which is promising. Perhaps it won't be too hard to get a little bit of a better ink flow out of this pen. For reverse writing, it's actually pretty smooth and the fee kept up decently. Um, the only thing is it's not much of a thinner line than writing front ways up. So that kind of defeats the purpose of it. So what do I think of the Jinhao X159? It's a massive pen. And you need to know that going into this. If you have medium to small hands, this might not be the right pen for you. But if you have large or extra large hands, this pen should probably be on your short list. I like the fact that it's offered in a wide variety of colors. I think that's going to really open up the um, audience for it. Uh, the fact that it has so much resemblance to the Mont Blanc, I do find a little bit unsettling. But at the same time, if you're going to put down $1,000 for a pen, this might be a good option just to get an idea if you do like the overall size of this pen and how it feels in the hand. For me, this pen verges on being too large. The nib is actually pretty well tuned considering it's a unique size nib and considering how it is in respect to the rest of the pen, I would say it's actually appropriately sized. I think if you would have put on something like the nib on the Jinhao 82, it would look a little bit out of sorts. In terms of room for improvement, I don't really have very many. I wouldn't touch this pen dimensionally. I think you're really trying to appease a certain audience. Um, so I would leave the dimensions as is. As with all cartridge converter pens, I do recommend changing that section into a uh, resin-based section so that it is eyedropperable. And actually, considering how hard it was to fill up this pen using a fairly standard ink bottle, that section just being way too thick, I would recommend changing this pen into an eyedropperable pen. Um, actually, if you changed out the end finial with a piston knob that actuated a shutoff valve, you could have a Japanese eyedropper pen, which considering the size of this pen would be quite something. And it's not a type of pen that you often see on today's market. So I'd, I'd like to see that. Um, but besides that, I do think that it's a well-made pen. It's well-balanced. It's a very large pen, so it should be on the short list for anyone that either wants large pens or has really large hands. And that just leaves me to say, thank you for watching.